What's up guys? Right now it is my final moments here in Paris. I'm just about to head off to the airport, but I wanted to put together a video to summarize my six days in Paris, giving you the top 10 places to see as a first time visitor. Now today's video is very unique because I had the opportunity to partner with 23andMe in making it. Essentially, about a month ago, I spat into a tube. From there, I sent in that tube with my saliva to a DNA lab, and 23andMe ran their DNA test to let me know that I'm actually primarily French and German. From there, they gave me the incredible opportunity to come here and explore my heritage, and now it is my opportunity to share with you my top 10 choices from my six days here in Paris. So without further ado, let's hop into number 10. Number 10 on my top 10 list of Paris is Champs-Élysées. Champs-Élysées is characterized by restaurants, shopping, and tourism. Everything from high-end to fast fashion, you will find plenty of shopping here. It's also not a bad place to try out your first French meal. Everything from macaroons to coffee shops, you will find Find it here in Champs-Élysées. Number 9 is the Basilica of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is one of the oldest buildings in Paris and it's absolutely stunning. It's truly a flashback into the 12th century. If you come here, one thing you can definitely expect is to face some crowds. There's always going to be a lineup outside of the door. Do you remember the movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's so cool. We should watch it tonight. Actually, this church was built off of Quasimodo. Was it? Movie. I would Once never have guessed. Disney made the movie and then they built the church a year later. Crazy. If you ended up visiting Notre Dame, well then I have something that's right next door that's definitely worth visiting. Number 9.1 on the list is the Love Bridge. Just a five minute walk away from Notre Dame, it is definitely worth visiting. It's Pont Neuf, which means Bridge 9. It's just like a couple blocks down from where it used to be. We got lots of locks and we're about to lock down our love. Yeah. Not with a ring, but with a lock. Hey. How much for the cheap? Seven euro. Can you got a cheap house. Can't cheap out on our love. <laughs> Seven euro. I'll, I'll do five. It. Five dollars for love. That's all it costs. <laughs> it's so ugly. <laughs> Damn, you just know this relationship ain't falling apart. I almost dropped the lock into the water. <laughs> what would we have done? Just like call it quits? Yeah. So the final step. Let's go. Follow me. Secure our love. Just throw it. Hurry. Right. Perfect. Now we've only got two more. <laughs> Now I believe in value and that's why we're going on to 9.2. 9.2 is Saint Chapelle. So we're right now at Saint Chapelle and this church is most well known for its stained glass windows which are just incredibly detailed. It's pretty quick to see like you can come through here in like 10 minutes and the awesome thing is it's right next to Notre Dame so right after checking that out you can come across the street here check out the love bridge and then head over to Saint Chapelle just like that within an hour and a half to two and a half hours you can see three of the incredible things Paris has to offer. Number eight is the Louvre. The Louvre Louvre is easily one of the most recognized landmarks here in Paris, and it is the world's most visited art museum. When I travel, visiting museums is generally very low on my list. However, with the Louvre, I made the exception to come and visit it, and it was definitely worth it. Right now, we're in the courtyard of what was some rich king, and he was like, yo, I need somewhere to entertain. And then he had some of the finest architects from the entire country, maybe world, come here and build him his own little private slice of heaven. Is that so much to ask for? You could do the museum in two hours or you could literally spend the entire day here. It is a massive museum and there's a ton to see and appreciate. I definitely recommend for a first time Paris visitor to come and take a few hours to visit the Louvre. You'll see some of the most famous artworks including the Mona Lisa. Which by the way, the Mona Lisa was probably just about the least impressive thing there. But the rest of it was absolutely incredible. Pretty solid. Number 7 is the Arc de Triomphe. If you go through number 10, Champs-Élysées, you'll probably be passing by this incredible roundabout. And as you can see, the beautiful sunset is currently setting right between the Arc, and we're about to go underground to get to the other side, and we're actually going to be climbing it to go and see what the sunset looks like over Paris. We made it. That's a good workout. <laughs> And I'm a little dizzy. Although the monument is beautiful, the most impressive thing you can do here is actually go up here for sunset. This is absolutely incredible. By far the highlight of today. We are on top of Paris in what feels like the dead smack center of it. Like This is like the arteries running in different directions of the city. Everything from the Eiffel Tower to the Financial District, it's a great vantage point to watch that incredible sunset over Paris. Number six is a little cliche, but I had to add it into the list. Our next tip is to honestly just walk around because the streets are so beautiful here. As soon as you get into the downtown area, you'll be blown away that every single street is a work of art. From the alleyways to the main arteries, the restaurants, the architecture, and the atmosphere is absolutely incredible. I've had the incredible opportunity of traveling to a lot of places around the world, 
and there is no city that has ever come close to being as beautiful as Paris. You honestly don't even need to take a taxi to get around. You can just take your two feet and get on your merry way because everything here, as you can see, is amazing. Just take your two feet and get on your merry way. I do say some things like that old people say. Yeah, you say a lot of old people things. I don't know what area we're in right now. I know, we're literally just- it's Definitely one to walk around in. <laughs> we would tell you, but we don't know. <laughs> we don't know where we're walking and there's just this massive church with gargoyles hanging off the side. This is a French 101 lesson. This right here is a chat. Bonjour. That was Francois, le chat. Bonjour. Salut. Incroyable. <laughs> Number five is up on the top of the hill, Montmartre. What I loved so much about Montmartre was that it felt like I was going back into traditional Paris. You had the curvy cobblestone roads, and although it's certainly nowhere near tourist free, you do get the feeling that it's more traditional than other parts of Paris. In Champs-Élysées, like you get that beautiful Osmanian style, but here, like you see the aging of it. The cobblestone roads look a bit older. The buildings look a bit unperfect and not as well kept, which I actually think brings way more character into it. It's so so cool. I'm out of breath. As you get further up into Montmartre, things actually do get a little bit busier. And to be honest, that was probably my least favorite part of the entire visit. The best parts were simply walking through the residential areas, going through the beautiful little alleyways and streets. But if you're willing to put up with the crowds, at the very top there is is an extremely beautiful reward, and that is Sacré Coeur. This is just such an incredible church. As you can see though, it is a tourist hub. Like there's tons and tons of other people around. So I would say that for me, I'm glad I came to see it, but it's one of those things you see once, you probably would never come back. But the nice thing about this area in Montmartre is that you're actually on top of the hill, so you can oversee pretty much all of Paris. I see the Tour de Eiffel over there. I see like some of the churches in the distance. You can see the financial district. It's absolutely beautiful here. So this in itself is worth coming up the hill to go get dinner, get a lunch, whatever you're doing. This is something you cannot even imagine. Bienvenue à la Palais de Versailles. Wait, is it Palais? Chateau de Versailles. So it's not Palais. No, it's Chateau. So this was all one dude's house. Can you imagine? This is like Project X to the max. Like you could literally have all the village people here. Be like BYOW, bring your own wine. Don't think they had beer back then. We're not gonna be going inside the castle today. Today is all about the garden, everything behind the castle. And uh, let's just say we've got a few hectares to explore. I can't see the end here. We're gonna go check the viewpoint over there. And even then you'll still like barely be able to see all the way to the end. This place is huge. Just a man with a small dream. Almost bankrupted a country, but in the most beautiful garden and that's what it's about. This palace is a display of the power the king once had. So much of the country's resources and wealth were invested into this one palace that France almost went bankrupt. <laughs> and while luckily no French have to deal with the financial burden of this decision anymore, it is truly an incredible palace. And let's just say the king has some great taste. Number three is the iconic Eiffel Tower. This is one of those places that you are gonna deal with crowds. You're probably not gonna see many traditional French people around here, but you've come all the way to Paris and you have to see that iconic tower. I actually didn't even wait in line to go on top of the Eiffel Tower, although I had done it as a younger kid and it's pretty cool, but to enjoy the Eiffel Tower, you don't have to go on top of it. On one side of the tower, you'll have a grass field where you'll see lots of people taking photos, enjoying picnics, and on the other side, you actually have a large staircase. And if you're a photographer, this is where I recommend you come to get the best photos. Get yourself on more of a high level view with the building and you can actually take photos and make it look like you're almost alone at the Eiffel Tower, which will be far from the truth. Number two is actually a bit of a hidden gem here. This is Rue de Crémieux. This is a place that I only found because a local had DM'd me on Instagram saying, hey, you gotta check out this hidden street in Paris. There's some beautiful buildings and we've been shooting here for like the past, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. When I visited, there was only a handful of other people coming down this alley and for the most part, we had it to ourselves, which I was really impressed by. Make sure to come and check this one out. It is fascinatingly beautiful. Number one, drum roll please. And it just just keep going and going and going and going and going. I was told it's gonna be like 14 degrees below, so much cooler than it is outside. The catacombs are a subterranean passage system below the city. These passageways actually first began when people started digging for limestones. Eventually, the city of Paris had expanded so quickly that the cemeteries began to fill up. Cemeteries were literally bursting at the seams and the odors were getting into the air. The king ordered that the dead be brought down into these passage systems that had been used for mining limestone. All right guys, so we've just entered the catacomb, the official part where they've been using it for burial. And as you can see, this is a massive pile of bones, like strategically placed to make the most of the space they had because 
There's roughly six to seven million people's bones in here. They brought all of the dead from above down here to avoid the spread of infection, the smell that was getting into the air, and just to simply make room for a very developed city. Today these passageways make for an unforgettable visit here in Paris, and they're truly one of a kind. This is one of the most historically rich places you'll find in all of Paris, and I would definitely even recommend hiring a guide here. There's a lot of interesting stories that even the audio guide doesn't tell you. Literally the most like ancestral exploration you could ever do. I think I passed by some of my ancestors, might be a little weird to say that. So that has been my top 10 of Paris. I hope you found it helpful. And I have to say that exploring with my DNA test with 23andMe, it was one of the coolest ways to travel, to know that I was exploring more of my heritage. If you're curious and you want to take your own 23andMe DNA test, check out the description down below. There's a link right to their website and it'll be an awesome way for you to plan your next trip. If you want to subscribe to this channel, just click on this box right up here. It's an awesome way to be notified when my next videos go up. And lastly, if you want to get the five hot tips to Paris, make sure to click on the box up here and I'll be sending you a dedicated video to get you ready for your big trip to Paris. Without further ado, let's get lost again in the next one.